Hello, how are you doing? I was able to finish most of my work this morning uh, since I'm still working from home. And so I'm hoping to be able to spend most of this afternoon just reading. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. And I have a big group of new books uh, that I want to talk about and discuss. So I thought I'd make a video too. And uh, first off, uh, because it was National Bookshop Day uh, recently here in the UK. Uh, so I went out to my local bookshop and I bought uh, just Us by Claudia Rankin. And to my shame, I've not read anything by Claudia Rankin before, but I've heard so many great things about this new book, um, which just came out really recently, and which I think is kind of a combination of essays and interviews and like a meditation on modern America and about racial strife in modern America. Um, so it um, has to do with uh, how there are these increasing divisions and animosity and um, you know resentment uh, between groups of people and um, so it's really trying to bridge the gap with conversations um, some of whom are um, friends some of whom are strangers um, to the author and um, and some of whom have amicable conversations with her and others um, have slightly more uh, testing and strained conversations with her and so yeah it's it's looking at all these different encounters um but through i think a different uh, uh mediums as well because there are some photos um as well as uh, sort of essay type writing so yeah i'm very curious to explore that oh there's emily dickinson huh that's fun i wonder why she's in there but uh but yeah so really looking forward um to to this new book then i have a group of books which publishers have kindly sent me and uh first off i have a novel i'm very excited about uh, The First Woman by Jennifer Natsambuga Makumbi. And I read a previous novel of hers called Chintu, uh, which is this big saga about Ugandan uh, history and family life, and which was so involving and moving, uh, but had so many different stories that I think sometimes they slightly jostled up against each other. So I'm particularly excited about this novel because it's all about uh, one female character, a young woman growing up in Uganda um, during a time of great um, political strife and dictatorship and um, who is growing up motherless, uh, but who has a lot of uh, influential female figures in her life, you know, who are trying to influence how she grows up and the way she grows up. Uh, but she wants to be her own woman. So it's about the her conflict of, of, yeah, growing up and trying to assert her independence amongst this community among, and amongst this group of women. And I just love her writing. And isn't this such a gorgeous cover? It also has a quote on it, um, which is a blurb from uh, the author Maza Mengiste, uh, who is currently shortlisted for the Booker Prize. And she calls calls it captivating, wise, humorous, and tender. Then I have a book of nonfiction by Hilary Mantel, uh, which it has the, the tricksy title, Mantel Pieces. And uh, so this is subtitled Royal Bodies and Other Writing from the London Review of Books, because I think all these pieces were originally published in the literary publication London Review of Books. Um, some of them are essays, and some of them are kind of book reviews, and some of them are reflections, and then there are some correspondence um, that she's had with uh, other figures in the literary community. Um, so some are about historical figures like Marie Antoinette and Jane Boleyn, uh, but then there are others about more contemporary things like she, there's one piece about in bed with Madonna. Um, so it's, yeah, I'm super interested to know her perspective on all of these subjects because she's so intelligent and thoughtful and interesting. And uh, like I said recently, I have a bit of a hangover um, from reading the, the last novel in her trilogy and and I just yeah want to return to her mind and thought process so yeah looking forward to diving into some of these soon. Then I have a short new novel from Peter Aykroyd uh, which looks like a really good book for the autumnal season because it's sort of I think it's kind of a literary murder mystery type book um, so it's called Mr. Cadmus and it's about two uh, single women who are cousins I think and they live in an idyllic English village uh, one house a 
apart from each other. And in between them moves a mysterious man named Mr. Cadmus, who has moved from a Mediterranean island that no one has ever heard of before. So they have a sort of comfortable, um, very uh, low-key life. But when he moves in, then uh, some grudges and uh, uh, resentment from the past arises and it leads to mayhem and murder. And uh, yeah, so it sounds like an intriguing, fun, plotted novel um, to, to get into. Then I have another new book of nonfiction by Natalie Haynes um, this time, who of course wrote the wonderful novel A Thousand Ships, uh, reimagining a number of different Greek myths um, from uh, the perspective of a number of different women. And this, I think, can be seen as kind of like a companion book to that, because obviously Natalie Haynes um, is an academic and knows so much about the subject matter of these myths. And um, and so these are essays looking at a number of different uh, Greek mythological figures and how their stories have been retold and reinterpreted over the ages, um, quite often by different men, um, which quite often, you know, gives a, a very slanted perspective on their stories and their characters. And so she's sort of looking at that and looking at the originals um, versus how they've been interpreted and, um, yeah, and translated over time. And so, yeah, so I think this will be so interesting to delve into, especially after having really appreciated her novel A Thousand Ships. Then I have a book of fiction called London Incognita by Gary Budden. And uh, uh, these, I think, are sort of slightly interconnected short stories, or at least some of the stories have overlapping characters or scenes or situations, um, but mainly they're independent short stories about a whole range of characters uh, from modern day London. And, and I think this author gives such an interesting perspective on uh, the history of the city. I've read some of his work before where he writes about London and he's able to encapsulate in it how this is a city with obviously so much history to it and you can feel the weight of that history in the the texture of the modern day city but also how you know there's obviously it's a city made up of people from all different corners of the globe um, who are all mingling and forming new communities and and you know so it's a city that's constantly changing but has all of this history behind it as as well and and uh, I think he encapsulates that so well so yeah I'm really looking forward to reading some of these stories then I have a new novel by Sigrid Nunez called What Are You Going Through? Uh, and this is the um, author who won the National Book Award for her novel The Friend. I think this is her first novel since that that publication. Uh, but um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that, that novel and appreciated it. I know there are competing opinions about it and not everyone loved it. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. Um, so yeah, I'm eager to read more by her. And this is um, sounds like a very emotional novel. It's about a woman who goes to see her friend who is dying from cancer and the friend uh, makes a request um, that uh, they can die on their own terms um, rather than letting the disease finally kill them and if the if, um, the this woman would assist her in that and so yeah very serious subject matter but um but yeah I'm sure she explores it because there's there was a lot of humor and warmth in um, her novel the friend as well even though it was very about very serious subjects so I'm hoping that'll sort of be infused in this fiction as well euphoric recall by Aidan Martin this is about a young man who's standing outside of a McDonald's waiting to meet a friend that he met online in real life for the first time um, but he doesn't know if he's going to show up or not so I think it's about that tension between our sort of online life and real in real life uh, but uh, but also he's a um young man from a Scottish working class family and who's gone through a lot of strife in his life to do with um, addiction and trauma. So it's about the, the story of his life up until this point. And, uh, you know, like the, the novel Shuggy Bane, um, which is currently on the Booker Prize list, I think it's really good that there are more stories coming out in fiction um, from people who come from a working class life and whose stories haven't often, you know, been told in fiction before. There's a new group of retellings of 
of famous children's fairy tales uh, by really interesting authors. I mean, I don't often talk about children's um, fiction on my, my channel, but um, I'm especially interested in these because they're retellings uh, which they call a fairy tale revolution because they're retellings which try to make these classic tales relevant for children today dealing with, you know, modern issues. And the authors they've chosen for these books are really interesting. So there is Blue Blood by Marjorie Blackman. Uh, there is A Duckling by Camilla Shamsi. Uh, there is Hansel and Gretel by Jeanette Winterson. Uh, I love Jeanette Winterson's fiction, so that's going to be super interesting. And then there's Cinderella Liberator by Rebecca Solnit, uh, the famous feminist and essayist. So yeah, I'm really curious and interested to try these and see what they're like. The Ninth Child by Sally Magnuson. Uh, this has such a beautiful cover. Um, this just came out in paperback recently. And uh, so there's Thistle on the cover because um, this is a historical novel which takes place in the Highlands in 1856 and follows a doctor's wife who uh, is mourning the loss of her many children um, that she lost in birth and, um, and who meets a mysterious man who kind of changes her, her life. And I've read um, this author's um, previous novel called The Seal Woman's Gift, I think it's called. Um, and I absolutely enjoyed and appreciated that, that novel. So I'm really eager to read more from this author. And then progressing into the autumnal season and going into to winter, I have a, a two books um, which are sort of related to, to winter and snow. Uh, so first off, I have this uh, book of short fiction called London Under Snow by Jordi Lavina, and it's translated by Douglas Shute. And I just love the, the cover of this, the sort of minimalist um, cover of it. Yeah, that's very evocative of the, the season. And so there are um, six different stories which are all about uh, London life and uh, that have to do with um, Christmas or the winter season. And uh, yeah, I'll take different fragments um, from these particular moments in different characters' lives. So I'm looking forward to trying some of these over the winter season. And finally, I have the novel Snow by John Banville. And I'm slightly unsure about this novel because um, this is a writer, you know, who writes these great works of literary fiction, um, but he also writes crime novels. And this is one of his crime novels. Um, you can see there's blood sort of dripping off from the word snow there. And it's about a, a parish priest in uh, Ireland um, who is found murdered and a detective who goes to invest investigate this crime in Dublin. And uh, yeah, and so I, I love this author's novel, The Blue Guitar, and um, some of his other fiction, like Mrs. Osmond and uh, and The Sea. Um, but I've never read any of his crime fiction. But I, you know, since I really respect and enjoy his writing, I wonder if he'll, I'll get along with this genre of his work as well. But I'd like to try it out, you know, especially over the season. It's sort of seasonally appropriate um, for, for that. But, you know, also like Joyce Carol Oates writes um, suspense and like thriller novels as well as her great literary work. So I think it's definitely possible. And um, it'll be interesting to see if he explores sort of similar themes and characters as he does in his other novels as well. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying it. But let me know if you've read any of his more genre fiction and what you think of it. Uh, but yeah, with all of these books, um, yeah, let me know what you think about them, if you've read any of them, if you're interested in reading all of any of them or all of them and, uh, and all that good stuff. And I'll uh, speak to you again soon. Bye, everyone.